guess who forgot to record the game audio. I wanted to actually include an NPC dialogue this time around, but it, it just ain't happening. Anyways, time for a, a proper intro. As you can tell by the title, we're asking a simple question with an obvious answer. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as a paladin? Not one of those dice rolling nerds who try and control the flow of things and how you live and what you consume. No, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that's a picture of Congress. I, I, I meant a paladin in a Dungeon and Dragons setting, but I'm... Yeah, I'm talking about the Brotherhood of Steel. Can you beat the game as a Brotherhood of Steel paladin? What does this mean for gameplay? Well, I'm glad you asked, Jimmy. Editor, put up the rules for this challenge on the screen. I don't have an editor, I just talk to myself to feel less alone. And it, it doesn't always work. So, we can only use Brotherhood of Steel power armor. This means no T-45D, Remnant, NCR, or Scorch Sierra power armor. We must wear T-51B, since that is the apparel that will make us disguise as part of the Brotherhood of Steel faction. Likewise, we can only use Brotherhood of Steel members for trading. Our only vendors this playthrough will be the Quartermaster and Doctor in Hidden Valley Bunker. We cannot use the Silver Rush, Gunrunners, or even the Followers to get supplies. Weapons will be restricted to those found in Hidden Valley and the Brotherhood of Steel safe house. I'm gonna admit, part of my intrigue in this run is because I haven't completed the Brotherhood quest since I was like 14. I always hated getting the holotape. So this challenge is less than a challenging one, but more of a walk down memory lane. Finally, we must mimic the tag skills and special stats of a paladin. Find to level up skills that aren't tag skills, but this will determine some early game choices. With all that fun stuff out of the way, let's begin our fantastic journey like we do every other. Within the love den of the elusive Doc Mitchell. What is he a doctor of? Nobody knows. He helps us up and takes us over to the Elizabeth Holmes machine that will tell us everything about ourselves. As mentioned before, our stat will mimic those of a Brotherhood Paladin. Likewise, with tag skills, we take energy weapons, explosives, and guns. We take no traits and begin our journey to Hidden Valley Bunker. Cutting through Yangtze Memorial and Sloan, we find the bunker with ease. As you know, the bunker is hidden from us and we will not be allowed in unless we know the Brotherhood of Steel is in fact there. To mitigate this, we travel a bit closer to Black Mountain and find one of the dead Brotherhood Paladins that we will later have to track down. With his holotape, we learn the Brotherhood is in hiding and we waltz on over to the totally hidden bunker. We are met with complete kindness as a group of them shows up with their pretty guns and escorts us downstairs. There we meet the head of this Brotherhood chapter named Elder McNamara. I told him that his boys were dead and he seemed to appreciate my coming over to inform him. He's an alright guy, but he forced a collar on me not consensually and I, I don't really think I'm into that kind of thing. He then shares that it is in fact an explosive collar and will make my head Kurt Cobain if I get too far from it. Yeah, that, that's a little too controlling for my taste. The totally sane and level-minded Elder McNamara then tells me to handle a nearby NCR ranger who's been giving them the business. I decided I'd allow myself some leeway in terms of weaponry. I didn't want to steal anything from the Brotherhood until I became a fully-fledged member of their cult-like ways. Using a laser rifle from a dead paladin fits in line with what I'm trying to accomplish. So I tracked down the ranger who has a Harry Potter-like name and introduced him to the local light show. The Elder was not happy. Apparently killing a high-ranking NCR member isn't really something you want to happen in your backyard. However, I feel like this was a shortcoming for him as an Elder. Who tells a naked weirdo, take care of that guy, and doesn't give further instruction? I'm starting to think he doesn't deserve to be Elder at all. I barter with the doctors for a little bit and got a few stim packs for the road. The Quartermaster wanted nothing to do with me, and the Elder gave me the quest I haven't completed in nearly 10 years. I had to go find all the lovely little holotapes on the definitely non-deceased paladins that haven't reported in. But first, a minigame. I helped one of the lead nerds isolate a virus. I'm only showing a few seconds of that ordeal, but truthfully it took me a solid 15 minutes to do it. This is why I usually blow up the bunker. I'm not suited for this high intellect lifestyle. Then trying to get on the quartermaster's good side, I told her I would find this stray laser pistol that's not accounted for. I spoke to a nearby initiate thinking he'd be able to help me, but like my therapist, I found no real progress in conversing. After speaking with the paladin responsible for the firing range, I found out Stanton had lied to me. He did in fact check out the laser pistol, and while I want to be mad, I, I can't help but find myself lost in those beautiful eyes. Who could stay mad at Stanton? Certainly not me. I went off into the waste to grab the lost pistol. I didn't have the ammo reserves to handle on the red scorpion, so naturally I relied on the buggy AI that we all love. Waited for the right time and swooped in for the gun and then booked it. I returned the lost pistol and Torres gave me a tri-beam rifle. It was also then I checked out her shop and she didn't sell any energy weapon ammo. Funny enough, she actually wouldn't sell me any for this entire playthrough. Paladin Hardin tasked me, the outsider, with finding a means to get Elder McNamara removed from his position. I was able to learn about the chains that bind. What is this magic rule that must be abided by? 
basically the chain of command. The faction personnel gives orders only to those that are directly below them and only receive orders from those directly above. Although the Elder is the head of the chapter, he cannot order around those in command of, say, Paladin Hardin or the Head Scribe. As of now, I had no proof that McNamara had done such a thing, so I continued on with his quest for the holotapes. Traveling from Black Mountain, I was stopped by a certain Malcolm Holmes. I know of his massive clone army, and as such, I ran away from him in fear of what may happen next. I entered the Repcon headquarters and was making my way upstairs. Everything went smoothly until I was unable to pass a luck check. As I said before, I haven't done this quest in like 10 years, so I was having a hard time remembering what to do. And despite my valiant last stand, I ended up the same as Reach. I reloaded, ran past the robots, and this time I did find the right paladin. Evidently, I did not see the second paladin against the wall. Only one more corpse to find and then we are in the clear. I ran towards the boomers and stopped at Durable Dunn's sacked caravan. Figure I could bring some armor back to the bunker to get some more stims. As I've stated in many videos before, George always dies, and this life, the next one, and all to come. I gallivanted along to the boomers' front door, shook hands with the Crypt Keeper, that is Pearl, and ran back to find the paladin, finding his holotape. I skipped all the way back to Hidden Valley Ranch and gave Hardin the dirty deets. The Elder did, in fact, break the chain that bind. There's a joke here about this rule, the explosive collar, and McNamara's fetish, but I'll leave that to you. Paladin Hardin took on the title of Elder, and McNamara was reduced to that of a knight. The new Elder told me he wanted to start beef with the Silver Rush. I'm all for starting gang wars, so this was like a little treat. I decided to try and recruit Cass. I'll be honest, I don't remember what triggers Cass being recruitable, and I wasn't going to the Crimson Caravan, so that was out of the question. I'm sure some commenter or five will tell me how to recruit her below. I cleared the surrounding roads of ants and let the rangers know that Nipton resembled the nicest park in Detroit. Got some quick experience. I sought out employment from the big energy weapons dealer and became a door guard. Surprisingly, they offered pretty decent time off and dental, but I knew my heart belonged to the cold steel that is the Brotherhood. I waited for that one disgruntled customer to walk in with C4 and blow the place up. My co-worker didn't seem to appreciate his forceful termination, so I opted to properly terminate him with a mandatory peer review. I stole what am I could carry. As I say before, the quartermaster did not carry any no matter how often I would reset her stock by waiting. Elder Hardon was pleased with how I ended things. Despite most of their merchandise being destroyed in the process and the whole point of my being there was to alleviate them of such things, he was proud of me like the father figure we all lacked. And me? I was gifted some T-45 power armor. As I stated, I can't use this armor since it doesn't mark me as part of the faction. So instead I stole the proper armor and will use the T-45 to repair. I decided to go recruit Veronica. She's a Brotherhood member, so why not? Wearing my new faction power armor, I was instantly perceived as a threat by the NCR troopers, but I handled them with a little buddy I picked up from the bunker. The slop and stop also didn't take kindly to my new style. Then, I admittedly got bored and began sniping NCR troopers at McCarran. This... Uh, it, it was regrettable. I didn't have the science skill to convert ammo quite yet, so I was just wasting ammo for a cheap laugh. You already know I wasn't going to do the credit check. I gunned down Mr. House's mischievous sex bots and took the key to the strip. Benny was next. I sent his body flying and absconded with the platinum chip. For now, I'd be aligning myself with Mr. House, since neither the NCR or Legion will even look at me. But then, as I walked out the front door of the casino, the NCR troopers there were hostile towards me now, but not when I first appeared in the strip. I opened fire, but then the Securitrons turned on me. This was when I knew Mr. House and I could never love one another. Also, that I wouldn't be able to use him as a means of making it to the endgame. At the Brotherhood of Steel Safe House, I took many of weapons, including a missile launcher and a Tesla cannon. I'm starting to see the perks of completing the Brotherhood early game, cause holy shit, the perks are real. Mr. House's Securitrons respond surprisingly quick, so I had to gun them down once more. The Tesla cannon just feels right. Big, girthy, and fruitful in spread. This is what every man strives for. I fought my way through the strips and tops to meet Yes Man. I talked with the White Glove Society and pointed a gun in the Omerta's face. I told Robert that only a slave obeys then just chose to ignore the great cons. Soon after, I brought Yes Man back to the Lucky 38. After Yes Man started wearing Mr. House like a metallic skin suit, he told me I should go shake hands with the president. I informed him I don't believe in the two-party system and he told me not to sweat it. What a beautiful guy. Before the end of the game, I needed to accept one glaring issue that is haunting me. 
my lack of ammunition. As I mentioned before, and probably three other times before, I can only use the Quartermaster to purchase ammo, but she has yet to have any. So I began borrowing in red font some of the uh, energy ammo in the Brotherhood Bunker. Surely they won't miss them, and I converted them primarily to microfusion cells. I also picked up some weapon repair kits from Victor Shack, Gene Skydiving, and the Brotherhood of Steel Safe House. I thought there was also a repair kit in the Gunrunner's place, but after killing two of them, I figured I could just take their armor and sell it for caps to repair things as well. The El Dorado substation was easy enough, a few stealthy kills and a push of a button, and now it was time to meet the Legate. There isn't much to be said about my time on Hoover Dam. The Gauss rifle is a menace and I have a hundred energy weapon. Ranger, Legion, and Khan alike were getting face blasted by my energy and dogpiled by my robots. I gotta say, I'm not usually a fan of energy weapons, but they kinda slap. I was part of the Never Use an Energy Weapon fan club, but I I've seen the light. Following the Brotherhood early game and getting power armor and a Gauss rifle or Tesla cannon is actually insane. I, I thought the beginning of game add-ons were broken, but truly the Brotherhood of Steel is just different. At the Legate's camp, I did what I could to snipe his associates. I attempted to Bethesda my way up a hill, but I had no horse, so instead I got into render distance and began blasting. One thing that bothers me about this fight is how the Legate will lose aggro if he's damaged enough and he'll run away. Arguably more NPCs should do this because it's smart, but man does it get me. Ultimately, he was no match for the Brotherhood's might. Veronica fell unconscious as well. I approached the exit and it blew up in my face. The colonel was behind it. I looked to Veronica and told her to hurry up, but like the bull, the bear would fall. And with that, I beat Fallout New Vegas as a paladin. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and sub. It does wonders for the channels and inspires me to keep making videos. And I mean that. I read every comment and they mean the world to me. Thank you.